Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be checking out some options for using the Vision Pro as a display while flying your DJI drone. So let's get into the video and check out some of these different options that there are. The first option we have is using our MacBook as a display for the drone. This can be done if you have a control station, a table, maybe out the back of a car. Another option I was thinking about is the Axoon SEMO. It's a lot smaller than the Mac, obviously, and all you need is the device, the NPF battery, an HDMI cable, and that's about it. The first HDMI transmitter and receivers I have are these Bradall, Bradall, I don't know how you say it. Um, honestly, they don't they feel kind of cheap. They're not really well built and they're pretty costly. These are $129 for the pair. The second option is the KCE 4K HDMI transmitters. These are going to run you about 76 bucks on Amazon. And the third and final option is the Genki Shadowcast Pro 2, which costs about $150. Um, this thing seems like it's going to be my favorite so far among all of these but we're going to test it and find out. Um, I also believe this has a $50 off coupon right now on Amazon, so if you want to pick it up, check it out. That's a lot cheaper than it is on the website. And so yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. We'll connect all this stuff up and see how it works, and then we'll go outside and test it out with the Mavic and the Vision Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and try out the Gen Key Shadowcast Pro 2. So we'll get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to set this over here on the side. Go ahead and set the Exune over. We'll grab our RC Pro here. We'll get the Mac out. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our Mac. So let's go ahead and open our Genki, I believe it's Arcade app. Yep, that's it. So this is how the Shadowcast 2 Pro, the Shadowcast and the um, Shadowcast dock for the Switch work. Is They're going to run through this app. They also run through OBS but I found that this has a little bit of a cleaner picture um, when you use it. So let's go ahead and get this connected. The first thing we need is a USB 3.0 or 3.2, I believe is what this actually is. This is going to allow you to basically transmit your HDMI signal. And the next thing we need is a HDMI cable. And one other thing to get the signal from the RC Pro to the laptop, we're going to need a dongle that is mini HDMI to full size, and that's because the RC Pro has a mini HDMI on the bottom. You can also use the USB-C port if you want um, and connect a HDMI dongle or another just like USB-C to HDMI, but I found it's not as clear of an image. So let's go ahead and get this connected up here. We'll plug this in. Well, if it will plug in for me. There we go. All right, I found also that you usually want to connect up the USB first and turns it into a little uh, robot here. How you know it's powered up is you have these red lights at the top. Um, they're going to start flashing waiting for a signal and then the app is going to show that it is connected. You'll see it show up on the Mac here. So then we're going to take our HDMI cable, plug it into the other end of this dongle and this is a little stiff HDMI so it takes a little maneuvering. Plug that into the HDMI in and let's power on the controller. There we go. We're going to go ahead and power on the drone here and let everything come up. Obviously this takes a second for everything to boot up and to get connected and how you're going to know that this is connected is you should have yellowish uh, LEDs showing on the front. And that's kind of how you know that it was that it's connected and working. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our controller hooked up here. I can click into my DJI Fly app. It sees my Mavic and says, let's go ahead and click on Go Fly. We can see the, the drone, got my picture, can fly over here, see uh, some recursion happening in the screen there. <laughs> so yeah, that is how that all works. If you go over here, you can make this full screen. And then let's go ahead and throw on the Vision Pro. And you're going to obviously let the Vision Pro power up here. Then you're going to open your home menu, go into your settings. 
make sure you're connected to your local Wi-Fi. All right, cool. So that, that way I can see my Mac here and also Bluetooth is turned on. Then I'm going to go and look, okay, there it is. It's showing up, connect to my MacBook. So yeah, that is the transmission coming through the Shadowcast 2 Pro to the MacBook being displayed in the Vision Pro. So that's how that works. Fly around the office here a little bit. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. We'll get this off. We're gonna try out the other two options, see how they work in here, and let's check them out. Now, let's get the Exun Simo. Let's go ahead and get our, the first pair of HDMI transmitters. Uh, I've got our cables here, and we're gonna go ahead. They really, they use, I think it's like five volt, two amp power supplies, so they don't need a whole lot of power to work. So we can grab these here. Let's see, this is the receiver, so this needs to go into the Exun Simo. Plug that in there. Make sure it's powered on. Set that on the Mac there. Plug this into my battery bank, and that's already powering up, I see there. Go ahead and grab my dongle here. You're gonna need this dongle for pretty much everything you do um, with the RC Pro. It just, like I said, gives you a little bit better of a signal. Plug this end into here, and let's go ahead and get this thing powered up. Um, another way you can power this is you can plug it into the bottom of the um, USB-C port on the bottom of the RC Pro, and it will power the transmitter. And the same goes for the Exun Simo. It has a five volt out on the side and it too will power the receiver. All right, so now we're going to jump into the headset here and we're going to fire up the Exun app and see if this connects and works. So let's go ahead and go into compatible apps. I've already got the Exun Simo app or C app. Click on that. Um, you'll notice no video input because I forgot a step. Go back to your settings and hit settings, obviously, and wait for it to come up. It needs to show up in the Wi-Fi because we have to attach to the Exun Simo wirelessly and it has its own Wi-Fi network. So hopefully it shows up here in a second. And there it is, Exun F8E7. Click on that. I've already entered the password and done all of that. That should connect up. And there we go. And look at that. Just like that, I've got a wireless transmission coming from my Exun Simo and this receiver here from my transmitter on my RC Pro. And again, like I said, I have this plugged into a battery bank just because I'm inside here, but you can take a um, USB-C to USB-C cable, plug it in and it will power off the controller with no problem. So. That's really cool. You don't need to be tethered to a battery. So I'm really interested to check out how this works outside. But let's go ahead and check out the other transmitters. Um, I will do a little bit of input lag checking here. It, it seems like it, that would be my hand entering the camera. Yeah, so maybe a second, half a second, I don't know, something like that input lag. That doesn't seem terrible. Hopefully that works out outside. All right, let's go ahead and disconnect that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this just in the headset here. So we'll disconnect this. You can see there the, the screen is waiting for a connection. This is the $129 set here. Um, again, I feel like these are, they're really cheap feeling. They don't feel very well built. Um, I would not wanna drop this. <laughs> I feel like that would be really bad. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. We'll go ahead and use the same cables because they too are powered by USB-C. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure that that is the, that's the receiver. So that actually goes over here. That is going there. Then we need to do the transmitter from the controller to the receiver. Plug that in there. You'll see here they're flashing. They both should be, I believe this one needs to be, if I remember correctly. Oh, nope, it's already, okay, already connected. It's just waiting for the final connection. And there it is, that one went solid. And there we go, look at that. I have my um, Mavic in my Vision Pro through the other set. Let's go ahead and do a, see that seems like that has even more of a input lag than the other one. I don't know. I feel like, again, these are a lot, not a lot more, but almost double 
the price and they feel cheaper and they feel like they have more problems. All right, so yeah, that about wraps up getting the um, accessories and everything working here. Let's go ahead and hop outside. We're going to test out the different uh, transmitters and receivers, check out the MacBook with the um, Shadowcast 2 Pro, and we're gonna see how that works. And then we'll come back in and I'll give my final thoughts after I fly around a little bit. So let's hop outside. Okay, so we're outside now. Let's go ahead and let's get into the Vision Pro, get the Xsoon working and check out how that works um, with a direct connection via HDMI to the Xsoon transmitter and the RC Pro controller. Uh, drone's already powered up. We're gonna get in the headset and I'll show you what it looks like to get everything set up there. Since this is not a standard um, Vision Pro app, you're gonna go into compatible apps, go into Xsoon. If this isn't already, as you can see, this is already set up. I can go back to my home screen here. But if it wasn't already set up, you would go ahead, I'll close this out, whoops, and open the home screen. You're gonna to have to go up into settings and Wi-Fi and connect to the Xsoon uh, transmitter. So now let's go ahead and open up Xsoon C. As you can see, we have the app here. We're gonna go ahead and set this like right over here. We're gonna be flying down this way behind me. So let's go ahead, I'll get my strap on here. And with the transmitter here, um, I've tried the wireless stuff. For some reason, there's interference outside. So I don't know what the issue is, but for some reason inside, there's no issue with no lag. The minute that I look at the screen out here, it like glitches out and wigs out. So the best connection I have thus far with the transmitters I have is just this connected straight in. So it's a little cumbersome, maybe mounted on the controller somehow. I don't know. But for now, we're just going to stick it into my pocket. Let's go ahead and step back a second and let's prime. Make sure the propellers are okay. We already did all the checks beforehand, so we'll go ahead and hit okay. And let's go ahead and take off. So, as you can see, a little bit of lag there. Let's go ahead and switch this into cine mode. Now the drone disappears behind the screen because the Vision Pro doesn't know what it is. But let's go ahead and turn it. As you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and put, see if we can get this side by side here. It's a little glitchy for right now, um, but let's go ahead and go forward and let's see how much lag we have in the headset. So again, I'm going to do this just to give you an idea, and we're going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and turn back around here. All right, and another thing is, is like I can see the drone, like I can see all my lights flashing in front of me. I can identify where it is so I don't lose visual line of sight, which is really nice. All right, so let's whip this around. Let's go ahead and whip this like this. So as you can see, I have pretty good, a little bit of frame rate drop through the headset, but that's why we're gonna be testing out the um, Gen Key um, Shadow Cast 2 Pro because it has a lot less frame drop and we're gonna check it out with the MacBook. But for right now, this is the wireless option, so I can walk around, I can move my screen if I need to, and say I've gotta film something, so I can put this like over here. I can see this giant screen that's the size of the back of my house almost. And I can sit here, I can go, you know, go up. As you can see, I can see the drone with no issue coming down. Got a plane up there, but that guy's pretty high up, so we shouldn't have to worry about him. I'm gonna go ahead and go forward here. Again, I'm gonna put these screens, try to put them side by side and see if there's a way that we can see how much lag we get versus the actual Vision Pro screen. So there's that. Let's go ahead. Yep, see there's some more lag. I'm gonna pan over to the right here. I'm gonna fly over to this tree. So I'll look at the headset or at the controller again. We're going to go ahead and push forward. Look here. You definitely have to account for that, I don't know, one, maybe three second uh, input lag. 
Uh, if I go into cine mode, it definitely handles a little bit better. It likes the slower motion. So the transmission, obviously we're doing this wirelessly to the headset from the transmitter um, to an app. So that's probably some of our lag here, but as you can see, like that's a lot better in cine mode. I don't have any of the stuttering or the glitching. So again, I can switch. What's nice is I can see everything. If it glitches out, I can look down real quick. I see everything here at my controller. I don't have a single problem seeing that in the Vision Pro. It may be a little blurred because of how the Vision Pro screen recording does its stuff, but I can see it with no issue. So I can get like a nice view of everything. Push this forward here. Little bit of lag, as you can see, definitely not one-to-one. -one. Let's go ahead and fly out into the field. Again, I'm doing cine. Uh, let's go ahead and do this to normal mode here. Go ahead and fly past this orange tree. See, this is where I would get a little nervous. I've got that tree right in front of me, and with the lag, I would be nervous that I'm gonna hit that watching solely on this screen but it's still not terrible. It's not unusable. It's definitely something I would not 100% rely on. But now the drone is over here to my right. I've got the screen if I need to. I can move this around and I can say, okay, drone's out there in the field. Let's go ahead and bring her back. Let's go ahead and check out the Shadowcast 2 Pro and let's see how that works versus the Xsoon. Go ahead and bring her in for a landing here. I'm gonna switch her over to cine mode slow things down and let's hit this that's pretty nice look at that it gives me a nice little landing pad that's that new update with DJI that they released for the I think all the Mavic series all the drones um, so let's go ahead and set her down that is pretty cool all right so we're gonna head ahead and switch over to the Shadowcast 2 Pro and the MacBook and see how that works out um, but that was flying with the Exune transmitter to the Exune app in the Vision Pro. Okay, so let's go ahead. We've got the Shadowcast 2 hooked up and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We've already got it up on the Mac. Let's go ahead and connect. I'll look at the screen if that doesn't work. There we go. Look up there above that. And here in a second, we should have a nice, there's the desktop. Look at that. All right, let's make this as big as we can. We'll grab this and again we're going to do the same test flight so we're going to put the screen over here to my left I've got the drone over here on my right i'm going to scoot this over just a little bit don't want anything to clip this would be more of a say you have a base station set up and you're flying uh, you know you've got out of the back of a car maybe you have a table set up you're doing a shoot um, this would be more for this setup definitely not something that's mobile because um, you're obviously i'm tethered through a cable unless of course i can never get the wireless hdmi transmitters to work at which point this would work flawlessly. So let's try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead, props are primed, everything's good. Let's go ahead and take off. Push her forward a little bit. And let's see here. What kind of lag do we have? So again, I'm gonna hold up. That's still a little bit of delay. I don't know how much you can see there. It's really hard to kind of make this let's see can i put this behind here there we go all right so i'm going to go ahead drone is facing completely forward we're going to fly forward again i'm going to put the screens as close to on top of each other as i can and we'll see how much input lag we have that is a lot smoother just right out of the gate that is a lot smoother i'm not seeing the stuttering and the um, glitching that i was seeing but again, we're going more straight from the MacBook, so this is definitely a cleaner um, image. Also, that transmits in 4K 60, I believe, um, where the Exune is only 1080, and I don't know the like transmission rate and everything and how many frames it'll drop. But this definitely, okay, there's a little bit of stuttering. All right, so let's fly here. Let's fly towards this panel. Go ahead again and try to keep it as one-to-one -one as possible. So maybe you can see that. Again, I know the Vision Pro blurs stuff out. So let's turn at this orange tree. That's pretty close. I'm impressed at how close that is with inside 
the headset versus the controller, at least from my view. I know, again, it's gonna be hard. Let's go ahead and go up. I'm gonna go over this tree. I'm being very careful here just because I'm trying to view this. I have my wife watching the drone behind me so that you know I've got my visual observer here. Um, she can see the drone flying out. But again, there's, I hope you can see that, but that is not bad. So I'm gonna go ahead. I think I trust this a little bit more than I do the Exune transmitter. Um, again, I use that. That's not exactly the use case for it. Well, let's uh, go to normal mode here. Let's whip it around. That is a lot better. Whip this back and forth here. I hear a plane coming. I'm gonna go ahead and go down a little bit even though I know I'm nowhere near close. I'm just still gonna be careful there. Um, so yeah, I can whip this around and that is almost, I'm gonna go ahead and look straight at the screen, go back up. Let's go ahead, this may be a little dizzying. Hopefully it's not. That's not bad. All right, I'm gonna go strictly to this. We'll switch over to just the Vision Pro. Let the plane pass overhead here. That is not bad, look at that. That is, that is smooth. That is really nice and smooth. I mean, I've got a screen that's, let's see, that, okay, that's as big as it'll go. Um, for comparison, I don't know, that's probably 25 feet, eh, 20, 20 feet maybe. I don't know exactly, but that's a big screen to be viewing this. And again, I can go up here, See, I can see through the trees. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it perfectly fine. I can see the drone climbing. There's a little bit of stuttering there. Still, that is not bad. All right, we're gonna fly over this tree. We're nice and clear over that tree. I'm gonna make sure, go ahead and, and watch the drone. Keep my visual line of sight. Go ahead and come down here. Come down over the garden. I mean, look at that, that is just nice. And raise our gimbal here. But I've got really good, just nice crisp video. So I have to say the Gen Key Shadowcast 2 Pro, definitely worth um, using. And the MacBook, I've seen some other videos where there's a little bit of lag with some other ones and you get a lot of um, stuttering going through, I think it's OBS, I'm not sure. This could go through OBS as well. This is going through the Gen Key Arcade app. Um, theoretically, you could also transmit this through the Gen Key app on your phone. So yeah, I think that is a pretty good test. A little bit of frame rate drop, but not terrible. I mean, if you're flying around, I, I definitely would trust this. Something around the Along the lines of if you're flying like maybe too far out past visual line of sight, that's kind of the, the lag you're gonna get here. Um, but beyond that, I don't see a problem with this at all. This is nice. And I can look down at any time. I've got my screen on my RC Pro. I've got my screen here. I can grab it, move it over here, maybe in front of my, let's say command station or wherever I'm filming. I've got all my stuff. So let's go ahead and bring this in for a landing here. We'll use the table here. Or I mean, rather not the table, we'll use the, um, Make sure I'm over my head. <laughs> Clip myself with the drone. There's a little bit of stuttering happening. I'm not sure why that is happening. I'll lower this down. Ah, there we go. I'll hit the right button eventually. So there's where that nice landing pad that it shows up on the screen. Let's go ahead and bring this down. Make sure I don't clip the Mac and there we go. So yeah, that is flying with the Vision Pro and the Mavic 3 Cine um, going through the Shadowcast 2 Pro. Um, I wanna try out the wireless transmitters. I may give that a go here. And if it doesn't work, um, we'll go ahead and cut and head back inside and maybe see what the interference was. But past that, I think that was a nice way to fly your drone if you're out flying around and you don't have maybe the um, goggles, Integra, or the any of the DJI goggle line. And I would assume this would also work for any of your other DJI drones where you would have to, where you have a way that you can uh, transmit through HDMI. I noticed uh, earlier that the USB-C port down here also does kind of like a mini display 
port, so you can plug in a dongle and go to HDMI full size if you need to out of the bottom here. So that's just a little bit of extra information for you. But anyway, let's head back inside and we'll check some more stuff out. Well, we're back inside. It looks like the wireless transmitters were a bust. Um, they didn't really work well, they were really glitchy. But I have to say the Shadowcast 2 Pro was pretty amazing. It was my favorite in the headset so far. I'll continue to test other options, but for now, if you needed a mobile option and you didn't want to be tied down, the Exune Simo uh, is pretty good. You just have to account for a couple second delay and then possible a couple other possible hiccups. But if you had a ground control station, I definitely would turn to the Shadowcast 2 Pro as it's just more reliable and I feel like I can trust what I'm seeing in the Vision Pro a lot more and I don't have to worry about crashing into anything. But that about wraps up the video. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna check out the full Alpine line um, from Genki products. Um, I have to say I'm pretty excited about it. That one, as far as my testing has gone, um, I have to say it, there's some really cool features and it looks really cool in the headset. But until then, we'll see you next time.